Hi everyone, it's Derek from the iReady podcast and this is my reaction to the 3-0 victory on the night and the 3-2 victory on aggregate over Union SG in the Champions League Round 3 qualifier tonight. Outstanding from the team tonight, really, really impressive. First time in our European history we've overcome a two-goal deficit as well. Certainly, I think after the first maybe 43 minutes we thought we couldn't really find where a goal was going to come from, but the team stepped up to the plate and they delivered in brilliant fashion. Tonight, there was a few players that were maybe a wee bit off it, maybe not their best performance, but as a collective, the players stepped up to the mark and shown the character and how good we can be in Europe. Delighted for everybody tonight, delighted for the players, the team's shown what they're made of and absolutely fantastic. Slightly later doing this tonight because I was waiting on the other game coming through, so we're going to be playing PSV Eindhoven. They beat Monaco 4-3 in aggregate, I believe it was. They, their game went in the extra time tonight, so it was going to be difficult whoever we got if we got through this round tonight, but it doesn't really matter, we're into that next round anyway. Not only have we got a great chance of qualifying for the group stages, there's another £5 million in the bank. Thank you very much. There you go. But the game itself tonight, there was zero changes from the for Union from the first leg. We made three changes from the first leg and we made three changes from the Kilmarnock game. Where we lined up McLaughlin, Tavernier, Goldson, Sands, Barisic, Lundstrom, Lawrence, Arfield, Kent, Tillman and Cholak. On the subs bench were McGregor, McCrory, Ridvan, Davis, King, Jack, Davies, Kamara, Matondo, Morelos, Wright and Sakala. So Kent starting, well, that was maybe a wee bit surprising there, considering they never got any game time on the against Kilmarnock there. Maybe more surprising is no starting Morelos. Now, he's been out for a long time. I think it was maybe the correct decision not to start him. Well, it's obviously been proven that's the case. Certainly a good firepower to bring on if things weren't going our way. But the first half, it was a marked improvement from the first leg, which wouldn't be hard to be honest. It was a one-sided affair so far in the first half. We completely dominated with 72% possession, however few clear-cut chances. Certainly we were varying our play, really in the first 20 minutes or so. We did drop our pace and we started to largely go back down the wing and crossing it in towards the, the end of the half there. Our best chance of the half till the end of the half, obviously, was on the 28th minute when there was a free kick from the left whipped into the middle. Cholak with a header and an outstanding save by the keeper to tip it over the bar. As much as we dominated and we did start to drop off towards the second part of the first half, we did limit Union to the odd break, but we managed to, their attacks always fizzled out. They were trying to slow the game down at every chance that they could. They were definitely play acting any time they got fouled as well. As gamesmanship, they were 2-0 up, you know, that's, that's what you do. It didn't look at that point towards the end of the first half that we were going to get the breakthrough, but on the 44th minute, from a hopeful ball floated into the box by Barisic, their defender completely loses the ball in mid-air, jumps up and the ball stri strikes his outstretched arm and the referee gives a penalty. No VAR needed whatsoever in that case. Up steps Tavernier, sends the keeper the wrong way to make it 1-0 and completely change the dynamic of the game. In the first half, Cholak had been up unlucky with a few headers. We've seen what Kent can do in flashes in the first half, but we really needed to up that pace more, try and be a wee bit more inventive. We really needed to try and keep on top of them. But in the second half, a fantastic performance, not let, letting Union have a sniff. We did start off a wee bit sloppy in the second half, though, giving the ball away a number of times very cheaply. However, we cleaned up our act, and then we started to get on top of them again, and it did pay off as we drew level on aggregate, and we went 2-0 up on the night on the 58th minute with Cholak scoring. It was a long deep ball into the box from the left to the back post to Tavernier. Tavernier kind of sclaps his shot. It goes behind Cholak who was in the middle, comes to Arfield who controls it and then shoots. The keeper made a decent save but he put it up in the air and it was right into the path of Cholak who was pretty much right on the keeper and he heads it in. Brilliant all round. We started to make the keeper work a wee bit more after that. Shortly after the goal, Lundstrom had a shot which the keeper knocked out for a corner. We made our first sub of the night on the 64th minute with Arfield off and Matondo on. The game then started to get away from the ref round about the 70th minute with a lot of tackles going unpunished and then we thought we were down to 10 men as on the 72nd minute Sands made a great tackle on the edge of our box. He did get the player with a trailing leg though. The referee was already writing his name in the yellow card book it was really at that stage unclear if the referee knew he had already booked him or not. He was in dialogue with the linesman who was right at the instant and he ended up rescinding the decision and giving us the ball. 
still unclear if he rescinded the decision because the linesman said it was a great challenge or that he completely forgot that he had given him a yellow in the first place and they maybe thought that was a wee bit too harsh to give him a yellow for that. I really don't know. The referee had lost the plot, as I said. Shortly after that, even more completely losing the plot from the referee, he had booked a union player for a foul when we were going forward. We were convinced that the player had already been booked the way the referee was dishing the, the yellow cards out. He seemed to have this knack of looking at other players and flashing at other players, none more so that in the same instant, Tom Lawrence appeared to get a yellow card as well. It's saying that he got a yellow card on on live score. I am not sure if he did or not. It's, I have no idea if he, what it was for, if he did get a yellow card. Bizarre referee in there. The game, however, was then wrapped up on the 78th minute with Tillman scoring. Barisic with a long high ball from the left into the back post. Tillman leapt and he kept on leaping well above the keeper and he heads it into the back of the net. Ronaldo has got nothing on Tillman with the height Tillman got tonight. That was outstanding from the youngster there. Absolutely brilliant. We made subs then on the 79th minute with Sands and Cholak coming off, Davies and Morelis coming on. Maybe a sensible decision as well, especially considering the game was... You know, hopefully done at that point. We were in the driving seat, get Sands off to save him getting sent off, just in case the referee wanted to play funny buggers again. Morelis, shortly after coming on, had the keeper scrambling on the 85th minute with a shot just outside the box. We made another sub on the 86th minute with Lawrence coming off and Kamara coming on. And then on the 89th minute, Union had committed a lot of players forward. We got the ball an hour and a half, made a quick pass forward. Morelis 1v1 with the keeper at the halfway line. The keeper had come well out of his box, fair play to him. Morelis caught in two minds and he tries to take him on, but the keeper managed to get a touch that went out for a throw-in. If Morelis had dinked at first time, uh, the keeper couldn't have done anything about it because if he handballed it, that would have been him off, I would have thought. And, you know, if he had, if he had executed it right, it would have been 4 0. But can he really blame him for that one there? And then we, bizarrely, were still committing players forward rather than just taking it to the corner. One break and that was that was it. So maybe a bit of bad gameplay there from us there. However, then Union got a player sent off for descent. He had already been booked earlier on. They got a foul against us. He picked up the ball and bounced it out of descent right in front of the, the referee there. So Julie got sent off. So, outstanding result, outstanding performance. Can't take it away from the players tonight. Absolutely brilliant. As I said, a few players, maybe not their best. A few players still to come back in. But as a team, we were outstanding tonight. One notable mention, though, Tom Lawrence was absolutely sublime tonight, I thought. He, he, he run that, that game. He was the driving force going forward a lot of the times as well. He's shown how dangerous he can be, taking the ball on, being direct. And... I've seen a few tweets when we signed him, turning turning our nose up at him for the fact that he was a free signing from Derby. Not at all. He, he was outstanding tonight. However, that leads us into the next game at the weekend, which is at home against St. Johnston. That's a 3pm kickoff. Obviously, we'll be playing, I don't know if it's the Tuesday or Wednesday against PSV. We'll find out soon enough. Dave and I will be recording our main podcast tomorrow, so that should be out either tomorrow, very late on tomorrow night, or into Thursday evening. So, all that's left to say is enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks for listening and goodbye.